Book 16, The Wall Macfuzz the Buzz was still in his dressing gown. The leader of the clan had spent all night racking his brains to think of ways of dealing with the Snagron. He had hardly had any sleep, and he felt worn out and drowsy. His head was burning hot. His eyes were red and sleepy. He knew that he would never forgive himself if the Snagron caught one of the clan. She had nearly caught one of them yesterday. Somehow he had to think of a foolproof plan to stop the Snagron from raiding the glen again. He shut his eyes. He was praying that he could think of something before daylight. The rest of the clan didn't feel any better. They had all been suffering from bad dreams. They just could not forget about the Snagron. The little ones had had a very bad night. Some of them just lay underneath their quilts, shivering and quivering all night long. Some of them tried to hide in dark corners with a blanket round their heads. Others darted out of bed in the darkness and ran round the room howling, weeping and wailing. They had been dreaming that the Snagron was coming to get them. They had seen her sharp teeth snapping at them. They had seen her beady eyes tormenting them. They had seen her wicked mouth snarling at them. They had seen her ugly head swaying above them, and some of them had felt her powerful body squeezing them, squeezing them, until everything went black. It was then that they shot out of bed, screaming and crying. Hilda had spent nearly all night trying to get the little ones to stay in bed. She held them in her arms until they fell asleep. But no sooner did one of them go to sleep than another one started to cry. She said that they should try counting sheep, as this was a good way of going to sleep. But it didn't work. They were all far too upset. The next morning everyone looked ill and weak. The strain was getting everybody down, but Macfuzz the Buzz would not let anyone rest. He had come up with a plan and he knew that time was short. There'll be no playing around today, he said. We must get ready for the next attack. I'm afraid that the Snagron has not forgotten us, and she may pay us another visit very soon. This means that we don't have many days to get ready for her. I just pray that we have time to do everything that needs doing. He looked round at all the members of the clan. First of all, he said, I need to see that everyone is here. I'm going to make out a list. I'll write all your names down in order. Then I'll mark you all off every day, so that I can easily see if anyone is missing. And without saying any more, Macfuzz the Buzz went back into his house. He took out a quill pen and a little jar of blue ink from his desk. He put his glasses on and began to copy out a neat list. Angus, Ben, Colin, Don, Ernest, Freddy, Gary, Hilda, Ingrid, Jock, Kenny, Lee, Macfuzz, Tosh, Winbag. He took this list back out into the glen and called out all their names. He put a little tick next to the name of each person on the list. Then he counted the ticks to make sure that everyone was there. At last he nodded his head. Good, he said. Everyone is present and correct. I'll check the list again this afternoon. Until then, I want everybody to stay together. No one must go straying off. 
If you must go far away, you should go two at a time. He put the list back into his pocket. Now then, he went on, gather round everybody, because there's a lot of important things I want to explain to you. Macfuzz waited until all the fuzzbuzzers had crowded round him. Then, speaking softly, Macfuzz said, I think that we should all thank our lucky stars that nobody got caught yesterday. It's plain to see that the Snagron was able to sneak in and raid us very easily. We must stop her from paying us another visit, and we must stop her today. The main thing we must do is to put up a wall all around our camp. We must build the wall as big as we can. Our camp must be like a fortress, which will keep the Snagron out. Does everyone agree? The rest of the clan nodded. Very well, said Macfuzz. First of all, we must sort out all the things we will need. We'll need lots of different things to build the wall itself. And we'll need the proper tools too. Come on then, let's get cracking. As quickly as they could, the clan set off to collect things for the wall. Big Ben and Windbag found some big, solid tree trunks. They got very hot and sticky, pulling and straining to get them down to the crofts. Tosh and Don were paddling around in the river Mac. They were collecting smooth rocks from the riverbed. Hilda and Angus went up into the woods to collect some thorny twigs. They were going to twist them together to fill up any gaps in the wall. The rest of the clan collected anything they could lay their hands on. It was astonishing how soon the things began to mount up. By midday, a big heap of odds and ends had mounted up in the bottom of the glen. There were all sorts of things. There were wooden boxes and empty paint tins. There were mounds of grass and hay. There were tree trunks with twisty roots. There were big rocks and little rocks. There were hard lumps of clay and mud. There were logs and twigs, rushes and reeds, dustbins and doors, lumps of coal, planks of wood, bits of rubbish and many other things. Next to this mountain of objects, Jock had collected together all the tools they would need. There were choppers and axes, big saws and little saws, hammers and nails, trowels and buckets, bits of cord and string. Macfuzz the Buzz stood back and looked at all the things they had found. Well done, he said. I think we've got as much as we need. Now we must form three teams. The first team must begin the difficult job of sorting all this stuff out, and then they must carry it to wherever it is needed. The second team must mix some sand and clay with water to make some lovely thick mud to stick everything together with. The last team must get on with the job of building the best wall we have ever seen. Come on then, let's get working. For the rest of the afternoon, the Glen Macfuzz was ringing with the sounds of hammering and chopping, mixing and splashing. There were some shouts of pain, too. Ow! shouted Jock as a lump of wet mud hit him in the eye. Whoa! shouted Ben as a big log landed painfully on his foot. Ouch! shouted Don as he hit his finger with a hammer. Hilda was darting here and there with her first aid kit under her arm. Before long, nearly everyone had a sticking plaster on at least one part of their body. Macfuzz the Buzz seemed to be everywhere, shouting out orders and getting everyone to work harder. It took them the rest of the day to build that wall. But in the end, they did it. At last, the chief was able to stand back and say, 
Well done, everybody. We've done it. It was a very good wall, forming a barrier all the way round the borders of their camp. It was long and thick, with a trail of wicked-looking thorns all along the top. It looked a little bit funny because it was made from so many different things. It was many different colors, with green grass here, yellow hay there, brown rocks here, a blue door there. Black coal here, and so on. But it was solid and stout, and it should keep the snagron out. Macfuzz was proud of it. In one corner of the wall, there was a little tower with two short ladders leaning against it. This was the lookout tower, and the ladders could be put away at night to stop anyone from getting in or out. Hanging down from the roof of the tower, there was a big brass bell on a chain. This was the alarm bell. When this bell was sounded, the clan would know that somebody was about to attack them. Now then, said the chief, before we start to clean up and go off for our dinner, I am going to read out my list again. He took out the sheet from his pocket and put on his glasses, reading it aloud. He put another tick against each name. Then he began to count the ticks. With a frown, he counted them again. The clan began to chatter. What's the matter? Asked Black Angus. We're one short, said Macfuzz in dismay. Where's Windbag? Everyone looked round. Windbag was nowhere to be seen. Suddenly. A loud thumping sound came from Windbag's house. The clan ran towards it. Pow! Crash! Smash! Pound! What a row! It was drowning out all the other sounds in the glen. The door to Windbag's house was shut fast. There was no other way in. Nobody could see what was happening. Bump! Boom! Smash! Kerpow! Windbag, what are you doing? Big Ben called out. There was no answer. Big Ben pounded the door with his fists. Windbag, Windbag, what are you doing? He shouted as loudly as he could. Go away! Windbag shouted back. I'm staying in here for a bit. I'll come out when I'm ready. Hilda went off to get the dinner ready, but the rest of the clan sat down on the grass to wait for Windbag to come out. At least they knew now that Windbag had come to no harm. But what could he possibly be doing? They asked each other a thousand questions, but nobody could think of a good reason to explain all the row. At long last, the pounding and thumping stopped. And Windbag started to pull something out, but he had his back to the clan, and his body stopped them from seeing what the thing was. But whatever the thing was, it had to be very big, because Windbag was puffing and panting with the effort of heaving it out. All the fuzzbuzzes came crowding round. It seemed to be a big wooden box. With a long doorway cut into one side. What is it? Asked Little Don. <sighs> Don't ask silly questions. Panted Windbag crossly. <laughs> Now, come on, everybody, give me a hand to stand it up. But what is it? Asked Don again. What a silly fool you are! Said Windbag, scowling at him. It's a sentry box, you pea brain. Wow! Said Little Don. What's it for? I know. Said Jock. It's for someone to stay in at night so that they can keep a sharp lookout for the snagron. That's very good. Said the chief. We stand it next to the wall and we pick a sentry to go in it every night. Hooray! Shouted Don. 
Well done, Windbag! They stood the sentry box next to the tower, so that it was not too far away from the alarm bell. Now MacFuzz looked at them all and said, I am very proud of you all. It has not been an easy day for anyone, but you have all worked hard without complaining, and we must have put up our wall in record time. It would be very difficult for the Snagron to attack us now, but we must all make sure that we stay on this side of the wall. The other side is out of bounds. No one must go outside the wall for any reason. Anyway, let's get clean now, and then we can have something to eat. I don't know about you lot, but I'm starving. They all went back to Hilda's house. She had put out jugs of hot water and clean towels for everyone. They were all very hungry, and they could smell the food that Hilda had been cooking. She had made a big steaming pot full of haggis and dumpling, with a tray full of jam tarts to finish off with. It was a lovely meal. Soon everything was eaten up. Everyone had stopped licking their forks and spoons, and all the dishes were clean. Some of the little ones were still hungry, so Hilda treated them to a drink of orange crush and an apple each. The big ones sat around and drank from big mugs of hot steaming coffee or tea. Before long, everyone was feeling sleepy. Macfuzz the Buzz stood up. Before we go to bed, we must pick a sentry, he said. May, may I have the first go? asked Windbag, looking very keen and eager. Yes, said Macfuzz. It's your sentry box, so we should allow you to go first. Big Ben stood up. I've got a present for you, he said and he went off to his croft. He came back shortly, carrying his blunderbuss. Don't aim this gun at anyone, he said to Windbag. It's full of bullets, but if a prowler does come creeping across the wall, shoot first, and then ask questions. Thank you, Ben, said Windbag. Well, I'll get off now, and he went marching along to the sentry box. As soon as he had gone, the rest of the clan went to bed. They shut up their houses and put bars across their doors. Out in the glen, it was the very darkest part of the night. There was not a ray of light to be seen. The moon and the stars were hidden by thick black clouds. Everything felt creepy. The cloudy starless sky made the glen as black as coal. Windbag could hardly see where he was going. He was jumpy and afraid. Goodness me, he said. I wish there were some moonbeams to see by, or better still, I wish I had a bright torch or some wood to burn to give me some extra light. A quiver ran up and down his body. Before long, he was shivering like a jelly. It was going to be hard keeping a good lookout on a night as dark as this. Hilda had put a little stool inside the sentry box. Windbag sat down and squinted out into the cold black night. Perhaps I should march up and down like a proper sentry, he said to himself. But... It's far too dark, and I must admit that I feel a little bit afraid. So Windbag sat still. After a long time, the clouds began to drift away. Windbag was able to see more and more as the moon and stars began to give out faint rays of light. Soon the sky was bright and starry and silver moonbeams lit up the glen. Windbag began to feel better. But now a number of little animals began to scurry about. Many alarming sounds began to drift across the glen. 
There were squeaks and squeals, howls and growls, grunts and snorts. Windbag began to feel uneasy again. Quack! Windbag lifted his gun. Stop! Who goes there? He shouted. But there was no answer. It had just been a duck quacking as it swam across the river map. Funny, said Windbag. I could have sworn that something made a sound. Squeak! Stop! Who goes there? He shouted. Flappity flap! Windbag nearly fainted. A big black bat came swerving across the glen. It went zigzagging round the sentry box, blinking its eyes and squeaking. Go away, bat! Windbag shouted. Shoot! Flapping and beating its skinny wings, the bat went weaving out into the darkness, looking for some insects to eat. Windbag sat back. It had been a hard day, and he had eaten far too much haggis and dumpling for his dinner. His eyelids began to droop with drowsiness. He let go of the blunderbuss, and it slid down to the ground. By now Windbag was snoozing. His head began to nod. In next to no time he was in a deep sleep. Soon he was snoring. Time went by. Windbag was still asleep when a yellow moth came flitting round his sentry box. It landed on his kilt and inspected it with its feelers. Then it flitted off to look for a flower to drink from. A little squirrel came scurrying across the glen. It did not stop because it wanted to get back to its tree as fast as it could. It darted off into the darkness. Windbag was still sleeping soundly. By and by, a weasel padded past. Its sharp teeth glinted in the moonlight. It was out on a hunting trip and had no time to wait around. Windbag saw nothing at all. He was sound asleep. A fox came by next. It crept up to the sentry box and began to sniff around. Suddenly the fox began to quiver. It looked across to the wall. Something was out there, prowling around in the darkness. Something nasty. Something horrid. Something that hissed. The fox crept away with its tail between its legs. An angry snarl came from the other side of the wall. Hiss said the raider. Hiss! It was the Snagron. Her neck was arching, her eyes were sparkling, her tail was swishing. Ha! She snorted. Ha! So, they've put up a wall, have they? The fools! Do they think a little bit of a wall can keep me out? I am the Snagron! the powerful queen of the Glen of Gloom, and nothing can make me quit. I'm brainy, I'm smart, I'm much too clever to fail at anything I try to do. This little wall couldn't keep a garden snail out for very long. Then, without a sound, she began to dig a tunnel under the wall. The ground was very soft, and before long, she was squeezing out at the other side. The Snagron was in the camp. Her burning red eyes looked all around. How clever I am, she hissed to herself. Now, let me see. Who's that in that funny-looking box? She slid across to look at Windbag, who was still fast asleep. It's the fat one, she said scornfully. He's the one who plays the bagpipes. Then, frowning to herself, she said, He is no good. I'll never be able to carry him as far as my cave. He'll have to stay there. I must look for a little one, 
Sweet dreams, fatty. And leaving Windbag in his sentry box, she went sneaking off towards the little yellow and brown houses. I want a little one. I want a little one, she was growling. The snagron slid up to the first door. Now, which one lives here? she hissed. Set into the door, there was a letterbox, and on the letterbox, these words were printed. Little Don. The snagron's head began to sway. Her long, red tongue came flicking out of her mouth. She began to lick her lips. At last, she hissed, I found a little one. But how can I get him to come out? Little Don was in bed. He was dreaming about the contest which the clan held every spring. In this dream, Don was the biggest member of the clan. He was bigger than Big Ben. He had collected all the medals and he was the champion of all time. Little Don wanted to be big and to have the glory of winning a medal more than anything that he'd ever wanted. He sat up in bed, rubbing his eyes. Oh, I must have been dreaming, he said to himself. What a pity. I would love it if I could win just one medal in the next contest. But it's no good. I'm far too little. And he slid back down between the sheets of his bed. Outside, the snagron's body was looping and twisting. Her blood-red eyes were sparkling and glittering. So, 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 she hissed. Little Don wants to be bigger, does he? Well, well, well. Now I can see how to get him to come out here. Maybe I can play a little trick on him. Yes, indeed. Back in his croft, Don was dropping off to sleep again. A soft hissing sound began to come from the thick wall of his croft. He sat up. The snagron was beginning to speak, saying each word as softly and as sweetly as she could. Little Don. Little Don, do you wish you were bigger? Come out here and I'll try to help you. Come out here and see. I can do anything. What's that? said little Don, rubbing his eyes and blinking. Am I dreaming? Then he shook his head, for the snagron was still speaking. Come out here, little Don. I can help you to win all the medals in the next contest. I have the power to make you bigger. Come out here and see. I can cast fantastic spells. I mean what I say. My powers never fail. Come out here, my darling. Come out here, come out here and see. Without waiting to think, and still in his nightgown, little Don went rushing outside. As quick as a flash, the snagron came swooping down on him. Before he could scream or shout out, she had him in her mouth. Snap! Don felt a sharp pain. Then everything went black. He had fainted. Now it was easy for the snagron to carry him off. Little Don was her prisoner. She would put him in her jail and never set him free again. And little Don was powerless to stop her. With Don's limp body still in her mouth and his nightgown trailing down to the ground, the snagron quickly melted away into the dark night. Now write, answer all the questions. 
do not forget where to put full stops and capital letters. Question 1. Why didn't Macfuzz get much sleep? Question 2. What did some of the little ones dream about? Question 3. Why did Macfuzz write out a list of names? Question 4. What was Macfuzz's plan? Question 5. Why did Don and Tosh go paddling in the River Mac? Question 6. Write down the names of three things that were in the mountain of rubbish. Question 7. How many teams were needed to build the wall? Question 8. What did the clan build in one corner of the wall? Question 9. What did Windbag make? Question 10. What did Big Ben give to Windbag? Question 11. Write down the names of three things that visited Windbag when he was sleeping. Question 12. Which part of the story did you like best?